Hello and welcome back to our inventory series where we're revisiting the series and adding in much requested features as you have all called for in the comments. And in this video, we're going to start looking at the hotbar at the bottom of the screen. So a hotbar is going to be a place where the player can assign quick access items from their inventory. So in this first part, we're going to go through, set up the UI, talk about what differences there are between this and the inventory slots that you already have, and also make it so that we can drag items from our inventory page itself into the hotbar slots. So let's take a look. So there are two main ways of doing a hotbar in a game. You can either have it as a separate inventory that is basically not part of the main inventory that your game has. So what I mean by that is if you go to inventory, there's your inventory there, but then you have another row of slots down at the bottom here, which are unique. They're not connected to these ones at all. Or they are representative of items in your inventory. And we're going to do the latter version of it, okay? Now, the latter version of this is slightly different setup than normal sort of uh, grids that we've done so far in the series, but um, which means that we're going to need to create our own slots for this. So let's first of all create the UI for this uh, setup. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new widget. And this widget is going to be my hot bar. <coughs> And in here, we're going to have a canvas panel, which will obviously cover the whole entire screen. And then we're going to have our hotbar at the bottom here. So let's just add our canvas panel. And then I'm going to put in a border. And I'm going to place that border at the bottom of the screen. So I'll hold down Control and Shift, click on this, and it will align it for you. And I'm just going to take size to content and then I'm going to go si uh, position Y and do that as uh, let's do minus 100. Yeah, there you go. More on this in a second. We're going to come back to this in a moment. We're just going to make the hotbar slots. So in our UI folder again, we can make a hotbar slot. Now, this is going to look and behave very similar to the inventory slot. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the inventory slot and duplicate it and rename it as hotbar slot. So it's very similar, but it's not exactly the same. And the reason why is that it's not a unique item. It's a reference to an item inside your inventory. It's pointing to something like a slot, in other words, rather than an actual item. So if we go back now to my inventory uh, hotbar, uh, there, I can now fill my border here with our hotbar slots. So I'm going to put as many as we need in here. So there's one. Uh, oh, I need to so wrap this with a, uh, let's do a, a horizontal box. There. Um, and then I need to duplicate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we'll do eight. Okay, and that's our hotbar, basically. And hit compile and save. So the main thing with this hotbar is, as I say, the slots are different. They are pointing to an actual location in the inventory rather than storing what the inventory slots are doing, which is the actual item itself. Um, we still need a reference to it because we want to be able to use items that are on our hotbar, um, as well as manage them being dropped in and dropped out. So let's first of all manage so we can actually assign items to our hotbar. So let's go to hotbar slot and go to our graph. Now on here, we're giving it its item ID, quantity, all that information is still coming in here just like normal for the inventory data. Except that what we want to do, instead of sending over the item ID, we need to get a reference to a particular item in our inventory component. So if I go to my inventory component, and we can see our contents are an array of these structs. So the hotbar slot is going to be an index towards that array. So let's make an variable in here, and we'll do inventory index, and that'd be an integer. So before we do all this stuff, we're going to feed it the item ID by going into our inventory component and then feed it into here. So I don't know if we do have a reference to it. We do have a reference to it. Uh, let me double check where that's coming from. Okay, we're exposing a spawn. Perfect. So we drag out our inventory component. And then from there, we're going to get our content. And from that, we're going to get a reference to. 
not a copy, a reference. And we're going to put in our inventory index in there. We can now split this pin and get our item ID out into there. We just store our quantity. It might actually be a good idea to actually store this to these variables instead. I don't. And then feed them in. And do quantity. And yeah, just feed that into there. There you go. So the first thing it does, it gets the content from the inventory index. The inventory index, though, we want to make instance editable. And um, that's it. By default, it would be set to minus one. So we're going to go to inventory index and do negative one. We don't want to use zero because zero is, or is referred to an actual index, which we don't actually want. So negative one to get started off, basically nothing is assigned to it whatsoever which means on the pre-construct here, we want to check to see if we actually have any items in our content that match this index. So you just check that it's a valid index and put that into a branch. That way it's not gonna try and access something that doesn't exist. Okay, and that'll do it there. Okay, so let's now go and go through, feed the item ID, get the data information and feed it into here. Okay, um, the next job is that we want to make it so then we click and drag on it, it responds differently too. So let's go for the drop function first of all. So on the drop, we're going to change this now because we're not going to be transferring between two different slots. We're just going to be assigning a slot to it instead. And we know what index we are. We know what inventory component we are. So that's all good in here. So what I want to do is I want to delete this stuff and I can keep um that bit because that's what i need and i'm going to set that to the content index i now need to take to refresh and update the display of my item so i've back to the event graph i need to recall all of this stuff so i'm going to go right click add a custom event and do on update hot bar slot and I'm going to drag that in there like that. So now back on my on drop, I can now call that on update on here. Like so. Compile and save. And the last thing I need to do in here is actually, oh, I need to change this content index here to be our inventory index because that's the one we're using here. I didn't realize we could just use this one. But never mind, we've got that here. Uh, inventory index is what we need. So let's go and set that to there. Right, index goes into inventory index. Right, compile that, go back to our event graph. And the other thing we need to do is the inventory component. Now the inventory component on the inventory slots is dynamically built. So it sets the inventory component based upon who opens the inventory. But in this case, it's always gonna be the player. And so we don't have to dynamically get this. So what we need to do is get player character. And from that, we're going to get component by class and get the inventory system. Like that. And then I'm going to store that as the inventory component reference. There we are. Okay. So now I'll go back into our world. And if I go into my inventory, there's my Apple, I can drag that down. And that's going to update with three apples in there. Okay. And it's not going to be doing anything crazy. Like it, it's just there. It's not going to take it from here. It's going to just mirror what's in that slot. So let's test this out a bit better. Let's take out the default Apple image that's in the hotbar slot. Um, we've got uh, nothing there. And then if it's not found, image icon is hidden if it does find it item uh, if it's oh if it's false here that's where we want to do this there you go there we go so now i can drag that into my hotbar slot down there and set it awesome um but we now are unable to take it out of there. So if I want to swap it for something else or just drop it back, it's going to just drop it in the world. It's not going to do anything, anything at all. 
So we need to set up the functionality for that, which we'll do in the next part. So there you go. We can now update our hotbar from our inventory. However, that's about it. We, we need some more functionality of our hotbar and managing a hotbar. So dragging in items from one place to another place, swapping them around. If we dragged in a duplicate, would it make a duplicate slot or would it swap it over? All that stuff we're going to cover in the next part, which you can find over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady right now from just $1 a month. Thanks to all the patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.